Hi guys. Okay, so now we're looking at the Lewis structures, drawing of the Lewis structures uh, that contain three or more um, atoms in a molecule. And then we'll look at the shapes and we will look at the polarity. Okay, so first of all, the important thing is that um, there are some rules that relate to the Lewis structures. And this, this, these rules are for these uh, molecules, the covalent compounds that contain three or more atoms. Now, these rules are not in the handout, so please make a note of these rules. However, on the worksheet, you will see them. So either way, if you don't want to make a note of it, use the worksheet as your reference. So that's like a handout. You can attach it to the handout and that's fine. Okay, so now let's look at, first of all, rule number one, first of, or in other words, it's not the rules, it's rather actually the steps to make it. Um, so that's why it's commonly called the rules. So anyway, so number one thing is first, what is the first step? You are going to count the total number, count the total number of valence electrons, valence electrons, okay? In each atom, on each atom. Next is identify if there are three or more atoms, obviously, you have to place one of them is going to be in the center. So out of these three or more atoms, identify the, identify the central atom. Now, on what base are you going to do that? Identify the central atom, number one, based on the lower electronegativity, lower, lower electronegativity. Okay, so for that, you're going to look at the table in the handout, or you just kind of know it, you know, that um, that which of the atoms will have a lower electronegativity and which one would be higher, you kind of just know it. Anyways, next is you're going to put the central atom is one that can, is capable of making or that has the capacity to make the make the maximum number of bonds maximum maximum number of bonds okay make the maximum number of bonds so that guy goes in the middle so once you do that then you place the central place that atom place the central atom in the center, obviously. Okay, place the central atom um, in the middle and, and place other atoms around it. Okay, around the central atom. Okay, next is, next is, the fourth step is connect the central atom with the um, outer atoms using a single bond. So connect central atom with outer atoms using a single bond. Okay, now remember that single bond, one single bond is equal to one, one single or each single bond has used two electrons, okay? So therefore count the number of single bonds that were used in connecting the central atom to the outer atoms times multiply that by two, okay? So that number is going to be, that number is the number, uh, this number is the whatever number comes here. Um, this is subtract the, subtract the, let's say call this is number, uh, number um, this is number five. So this is subtract number five 
from the total number of atoms. So count the total number of valence electrons. So this becomes, let us say, number one. Okay. So number five from number one. That is subtract. So number one, take the number one minus number five. Okay. So here is the total number of valence electrons is this. This is the total valence electrons. Total valence electrons is this number one. Number, let's put this properly here. Total, this is central atom. And so this is this guy. Total valence electrons is number one, the number one. And then number five is the ones that got used up. So that is number Okay, so here is this number five. So total number, total valence electrons minus the electrons um, used in single bond formation. Okay, I'll just put this here properly. Single, total number of single bonds. Okay, used in total like all the single bonds, okay? So total valence electrons. So that remaining electrons, so this is the remaining electron. So what are you going to do with the remaining electrons? The remaining electrons is equal to, now let's put this here, this is number six, okay? So then comes number seven. Place the, place the remaining electrons, remaining, electrons and that is the electrons that are in number six. Place the remaining electrons on the outer atoms, okay? And any leftover, and any leftover electrons are placed on the central atom, okay? On the central atom. Leftover is on the central atom. Now comes the important things. Number eight, check for the, check for the octet on number one, outer atoms, if their octet is met or not, outer atoms, and then the central atom. So central atom is last, central atom, okay? Next thing you're also going to check is the octet and octet on the outer, also check. So this is A, this is 8A, sorry. This is 8A, um, 8A, and B. Check for the octet on the outer atom and the central atom, and also check for the, um, the need to make the bonds. Need to make the bonds. Is it satisfied or not? Satisfied or not? Okay, satisfied or not? So if it is not, then you will have to rearrange in order to make sure that the need to make the bond is satisfied and the octet is satisfied also. So first is the need, this is important, need to make the bonds met, met or not. If it's met, it's good. Your structure is good. Second thing is check for the octet. Now remember, that some atoms do defy the octet, okay? Some atoms defy, can defy the octet. It's not all the time that they will follow. Can defy the octet. And if they are, then you just don't worry about it. Can defy the octet rules. And which ones these are? This is um, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, 
bromine, iodine, and xenon. These guys do, can, can defy. So it, they can follow the octet rule and they can not follow the octet rule, depends. So also we talked about it earlier that phosphorus makes three and five bonds. Okay, sulfur makes two, four and six bonds. Chlorine, bromine, iodine make one, three, five and seven bonds. And xenon can make zero bonds, but it can also make two, four and six bonds. So these are the situations where these guys can defy the octet, okay? Are actually defying the octet when they are making three, five bonds, four and six bonds, three, five and seven bonds, two, four and six bonds, okay? So keep this in mind that, you know, those situations when they defy the octet. So let's look at some of the formation. Now, for example, you have, <clears throat> for example, uh, these are just some examples now. Let's do one here. Carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide. So what is the deal with carbon dioxide? Here we have carbon and we have one carbon and we have two oxygens. So let's count the number one. First of all, the total valence electrons. So carbon is bringing four valence electrons. Oxygen is bringing six valence electrons. Carbon is in group 4A, so it's four valence electrons. Oxygen is in group 6A, six valence electrons, okay? So this is four plus, and this one is six times two is 12. So this becomes 16 electrons. So these are the total valence electrons, okay, 16. Okay, next is which one is going to make the maximum number of bonds and has lower electronegativity, although it is not all the time. Electronegativity is not all the time like, um, you know, like, a, like it's not a foolproof thing because sometimes atoms can have a lower electron, a higher electronegativity and they can still be in the center. So we'll look into that. But anyway, here comes the bonds. And um, so we see carbon can make four bonds, group 4A, okay? So he's in group 4A. Group 4A, so it's making four bonds and all this is covered in the tables that were done with the nomenclature. So refer to that. And also in the handout, also you can look in that. Anyways, oxygen can make two bonds. So because it is present in group 6A. Okay, so group number relates to the bonds also and the group number relates to the valence electrons also. Okay, so four valence electrons and here this guy has six valence electrons. So that is why Oxygen, group 6A, carbon 4A. All right, next is the, um, so which one? And electronegativity, okay. Electronegativity of carbon versus the electronegativity of oxygen. So how would you know that? Or electronegativity of carbon and oxygen. You're going to go and check the tables in your handout. And here you will see that carbon is 2.5 and oxygen is 3.5. So here we bring it. Three, three. So 2.5 here is lower, and oxygen is 3.5. So this guy, oxygen has higher electronegativity. Electronegativity is higher than carbon. So therefore, carbon is the central atom. So you identified that, and now you are going to place carbon in the center and you're going to place oxygens on either side, on the sides. Okay, first do that. Next is you are going to connect carbon and oxygens with one single bond. So remember, one single bond uses two electrons. So this is one electron, this is one electron. And then this guy also one electron, this one electron. So therefore, so there are two single bonds. So therefore four electrons used up, okay? And total is, total valence electrons is 16. So 16 minus four electrons 
that got used up in the single bond formation, these guys, the four, so four electron got used up, these ones. So you are getting here, 12 electrons are left. Okay, so where are you going to put them? Place them on the first outer atoms. And which are the outer, outer atoms? Outer atoms are oxygen. And so here I'm going to put the, these, uh, these uh, 12 electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So all the 12 electrons have got used up. All 12 electrons got used up. So how, so now you have to do the fourth thing here is check. Is the structure complete? So you are going to check first of all, number one, is the octet of every atom met or not? Octet met or not? This is one piece. Second thing is the need. Actually, the need to make the bond is a priority, is, is more important thing. So need to make their specific number of bonds. Need to make bonds is met or not. So this is what you will check. Okay, so we see that in this structure, in this structure, let's draw it again. So you have carbon and you have oxygen and you have another oxygen and you have one single bond here, one single bond here. And these electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we see that yes, the octet of oxygen is met to this is six and then seven, eight. So this oxygen has six electrons and then seven, eight. So the octet of the oxygen is met. So octet of oxygen is met, but not of carbon, right? So every single octet should be met. Why? Carbon only has one, two, three, and four. So carbon needs, carbon needs four more electrons. So this is one piece. Next is the, next is the need to make the bonds. So, and that is the carbon wants to make four bonds because group 4A, it will be happy. Oxygen wants to make two bonds. And here oxygen is making only one bond. So oxygen is not happy and carbon is also not happy. So oxygen is, oxygen is not happy. Although carb octet is met, but the, 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 the need to make the bonds is not met and oxygen is, carbon is also not happy. So what is going to happen? Rearrangement, rearrangement. And when the rearrangement happens, in that case, one lone pair from, one lone pair from, oxygen gets um, between carbon and oxygen to make a another like single bond, okay? And that's eventually that um, adds up to a double bond. And that's what the oxygen wants. So now what does this mean? So here is your carbon. Okay, here is your carbon. And this is the single bond. And this is another oxygen. And here are your, this is the lone pair. This lone pair and this lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. Okay, so this oxygen gives its lone pairs between carbon and oxygen. This oxygen also gives its lone pair. And that rearrangement leads to a structure which looks like this. Carbon, 
oxygen, oxygen, and this lone pair makes a double bond, another single bond in other words. So total becomes a double bond. And so now these guys also rearrange, this also rearrangement. So pay attention here, these are these lone pairs are at 90 degree, lone pairs at 90 degrees. But here, the lone pairs are more spread out. Lone pairs, um, I think, at 120 degrees. So which is more, you know? So therefore, it's a preferred, you know, preferred setting. Here, this is the lone pairs are at 90 degrees. So not a very, it's very uh, squished. Remember that lone pairs are negatively charged. So now let's, let's count. So we have oxygen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So octet of oxygen is met. You have another oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that is also met. So every oxygen is eight electrons, eight electrons, happy. Look at carbon. Carbon also has eight electrons. Four coming from the double bonds so therefore the so that so that that uh, that rearrangement has caused the the uh, rearrangement rearrangement has caused the electrons to you know just spread out so that's why they are so electrons spread out so more like less um like there's um they're not they're not um what do you call, like they are not um, repelling each other. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. So they repel if two, too close, if too close to each other. Oh, okay. Now, second is the, the, so second thing is now we see that carbon is making four bonds. Oxygen is making two bonds. So very happy state for carbon and oxygen and their octet and octets are met also for both of them and their octets are also met. So that is the structure of carbon dioxide. So here is this carbon one more time, double bond, double bond, oxygen, oxygen, and that's the lowest structure of carbon dioxide. Okay, clear? And we write it as CO2. Okay, and if you count it also, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All the 16 electrons got placed, okay? Got placed. And the octet of each, octet of each is met also, okay? So that's what it is. Now let's look at the, um, the, the shape. So for the shape, you are going to look at the table. Just one second. Okay, so now we're looking at the shape. So for the shapes, you can refer to this table. Now in this table 6.16, which is on page, I believe, page nine, you are going to see, um, first of all, on the extreme left-hand side is the electron groups. These electron groups relate to the central atom. Okay, now on the central atom, what is happening? So on the central atom, we see if there are lone pairs or are there bonds, how many bonds are there? So a single bond, double bond, triple bond is considered to be one electron group. Lone pair on the central atom is considered to be one electron group. Now, we talked about earlier also in the previous uh, lecture that electron group geometry, this is internal shape. So as if you enter inside the molecule and you see it from, you know, all around. So that internal shape, that internal shape is, um, is the electron group geometry. Then comes the bonded angles, right? That is like, how are these, uh, no, sorry, bonded atoms. How are the atoms bonded? And then lone pairs, bond angles, and then the molecular shape. Molecular shape is from outside. It is the overall molecule. How does it look? Okay, so now let's look at the 
shape here, shape of CO2. So we are going to first look at CO2 like this, okay? We don't care about these lone pairs that are present on the outer oxygens. We are only concerned with the central atom carbon and what is happening around it. So uh, there's no lone pair on the central atom carbon, but there is this one double bond and there's one double bond. So remember that, that any time these electron uh, groups, these are also called the electron clouds. Okay, these are the clouds of electrons, electron clouds. So if there is one single bond, it is considered to be one electron group. Two, so one double bond is considered to be one electron group. One triple bond is considered to be one electron group. And one lone pair is considered to be one electron group. So these are all electron groups. Let me put this here, electron groups. Okay. So it's just that even if it's one, one is all one, one triple bond, one triple bond, single bond, double bond is considered to be one. One lone pair is also one electron group. So in this case, if you see, there are, this is one, Sorry, this is one electron group. This is one electron group. This is one electron group. One electron group. And this is one electron group. So on both the sides are two electron groups. So it comes out to be two electron groups on carbon okay so always this is this is with respect to or in other words on the central atom uh let's put it on central atom on central atom how many electron clouds or electron groups are there this, is, this means the same clouds or groups. So we have two electron groups. Now we see that two electron groups correspond to which shape? So look at the table. Two electron groups is this, two electron groups. So if the question is asking you electron group geometry, it is linear. If the question is asking you um, what, like what is the molecular shape, it is linear. And so anyways, this they have shown you in three dimensions, they have shown you, but also two bonded atoms. That's another thing. So let's write this down. Two electron groups and two bonded atoms. Two bonded atoms, which ones are those? This is a bonded atom one bonded atom and this is a bonded atom, bonded atom. So two bonded atoms on either side of the central atom. Carbon is the central atom. Okay, so when carbon is the central atom, what is happening around it? So we see that these relate to from table, uh, what was it, 6.16, this is the shape is linear, linear shape. Okay, it's a linear shape. And that linear shape is that like a pencil or like a rod, like that. So, and that is the molecular group geometry and the electron gum electron geometry also, electron group geometry, as we talked about, is more internal inside the molecule, inside the bonds. So inside the molecule. And molecular geometry or molecular shape 
So for, for your course, it's mostly molecular geometry or shape. So that is how does a molecule look from outside, outside the molecule. So the shape outside from outside, it's more like linear, okay? So that's the deal with the shape. That's the shape. We draw the Lewis structure. That is the Lewis structure. And we will have the, uh, the last one is the polarity. P-O-L-A-R-I-T-Y, polarity, okay? So polarity, again, you, this, so for the, for the shapes, um, let's do this. That's the table 6.16 for shape. Let me write this down here. So shapes is table, table 6.16 and polarity. So for the polarity, you are looking at table um, 6.14 and the electronegativities are also here. So we'll look at that 6.14. So this is table 6. Point one four, six 6.16 and 6.14, okay? Now we will look at the uh, Lewis structure shape and now polarity, okay? So for the polarity, fine. This is carbon. This is the double bond with oxygen. This is double bond with oxygen. And these lone pairs on the outside, this lone pairs on the outside. So polarity, for polarity, what we look at is the difference in electronegativity, okay? So this is called the difference in, difference in electronegativity, electronegativity. And that's going to be on either side. So you have carbon here is this is one bond. This is another bond, okay? So electronegativity of carbon and electronegativity of oxygen. Carbon is, electronegativity of carbon. Carbon is 2.5 and oxygen is 3.0, 2.5 and 3.5. So carbon is two, let's just, it should be on top. So oxygen and carbon, 3.5, and this is 2.5. And when you subtract it, this is 1.0, okay? So the difference in electronegativity, when it is 1.0, what kind of bond is that? So we are looking at the bonds. So what kind of bond is that? Is it a polar bond or is it a non-polar bond? or is it an ionic bond? So obviously we are just dealing with the polar and the non-polar, okay? So you look at the table and here, the difference in the electronegativity difference comes out to be between 0.4 and 1.8. So that is a polar bond, which means that the electrons are not shared equally. Therefore, between on carbon and oxygens, we will see the formation of delta positive and delta negative charges. So here is the oxygen being more electronegative will draw the electron clouds towards itself. So oxygen will have a delta negative charge. Carbon will have a delta positive charge because it has a lesser electronegativity. Same is the case, this oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, okay? So we see in this case that this is, this is a polar bond because the difference in the electronegativity is, is one. And this is also a polar bond. So we have two polar bonds in this molecule, but let's lo now look at the overall overall, these are the individual bonds are polar. Overall polarity, what is the deal with that? So overall polarity in this molecule. So you have carbon in the middle and you have oxygen here and oxygen here. 
Okay, now let's look at the, one second. This is double bond, double bond. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oxygen being more polar pulls the electron clouds towards itself. This oxygen being more polar, pulling the electron clouds towards itself. As a result, this molecule will, yes, will show when you, when you take this car, uh, put it under the heat maps, you know, you will see that, that this side is hot, very hot, very hot side, hot region. And this side is also very hot, very hot. But the side that is in the middle, very little, you know, this part is cold. So the part because carbon is, 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 you know, cooler. So why is it cooler? Because oxygen is pulling the electron clouds towards itself. So the electrons are spending more time towards carbon, towards oxygen. And this guy also, is pulling the electrons towards itself. So more, more time electrons are spending, but it is the pull is the same. Equal and opposite pull. Equal and opposite pull on both sides. Okay. And what happens then when it's equal and opposite on both the sides cancels each other out. The effect of the pull, effect of the pull is canceled, okay? Is canceled. So when it's canceled, what happens? Then the overall, overall molecule becomes non-polar. So overall, Overall means the net polarity. If you were to, if you were to measure the amount that is pulled by oxygen and the other, the amount, the pull, the force with which oxygen, oxygen pulls the electrons towards itself. If you were able to measure that pull and we have been able to actually, so it cancels out. The only thing is when one side is positive, the other side is negative. It cancels out. The net polarity becomes zero. And anytime the net polarity becomes zero, the molecule, so CO2 molecule is non-polar. Non-polar molecule. All right. Now you can also imagine like, you know, just, just for the sake of understanding, these are the two heavyweight champions, heavyweight champions. Okay, this guy is pulling a rope with the same force as this guy. So here is this piece of rope. Um, here's this piece of rope. And they're pulling it with the same force. Okay. They're pulling it with the same force. This guy is also pulling with the equal force. This guy is also pulling with the equal force. So in equal and opposite direction, this tug of war, it doesn't go anywhere. Tug of war. Just like the tug of war ends in an either a tie or the rope is going to break if the pull is the same on both the sides. So rope breaks. And that means, you know, it's just basically, you know, nobody wins. So same story here. Nobody is winning. Oxygen may be very highly electronegative and an extremely polar bond, but the overall, the net polarity is zero. So the overall molecule is non-polar. Okay. All right. So this is one thing. Next is let's look at the, let's look at next example. Um, so... That was the first example of CO2. Let's look at the next example of ammonia. So you have one nitrogen and you have three hydrogens. Okay, so first is count the total number of valence electron. So one nitrogen, nitrogen is in group 5A, means there are five valence electrons 
and it will make three bonds. So this is what you know of nitrogen. Hydrogen is in group 1A. It has only one valence electrons. It will only make one bond and that is with hydrogen. With nitrogen, it will make three bonds. So anyways, nitrogen, five valence electrons, three, so three hydrogens bringing in one electron each. So total we have five plus three is equal to eight electrons. So that's the total of eight electrons. Okay, there's something else we did, which we did not cover. And that one was, um, remember that uh, hydrogen defies the octet. Hydrogen defies, um, or in other words, hydrogen does not follow the octet, does not follow the octet rule. So keep that in mind. Okay. So, uh, so here we have hydrogen. So eight electrons total. Next thing is which one is going to be in the center? So is nitrogen in the center or is hydrogen in the center? Which one? We will see that nitrogen Although electronegativity of nitrogen is higher than the electronegativity of hydrogen, as you can see, the electronegativity of a hydrogen is 2.1 and nitrogen is 3.0. So 2.1 and this is 3.0. So nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. However, so that's one piece. Nitrogen, group 5A, makes three bonds. Hydrogen, group 1A, only makes one bond. So therefore, even though nitrogen is more electronegative, yet nitrogen is, uh, is, is in the central, is going to be the central atom. Okay, next is you place nitrogen in the middle and you take place hydrogens on three sides. And I'm just drawing a rough figure here. So here you have nitrogen and hydrogen connected with single bonds, all right? So we have used now one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So six electrons used in single bond with nitrogen. Okay, so what happens to the remaining? The remaining two electrons go on central atom. Okay, so here. All right, now here's the thing, important thing. Nitrogen has is holding the zone pairs. Remember that hydrogens, each hydrogen want to make, want, sorry, want two electrons. So it looks like helium. And hydrogen only can make one bond. Hydrogen, no octet. Okay, and so when that happens, so don't worry about the octet, this piece, the, the, this rule, the check for the octet formation. So just keep that in mind that hydrogen will not follow the octet rule. So as far as it's making a single bond and that's okay, that's happy, makes, uh, makes hydrogen happy. So you have hydrogens, nitrogen, And that's the Lewis structure. So if you check for the, so this is done. Look at the, look at for nitrogen also. Nitrogen is making, nitrogen is making three bonds. And the octet of nitrogen is also met. So if you look at the nitrogen, one, two, 
three, four, five, six electrons got used up with the hydrogen and the remaining two are on nitrogen. So overall, eight electrons total for nitrogen and it's happy with that, okay? So with that said, now that's the, that's the shape, that's the, sorry, the Lewis structure, which looks like this and it's always at an angle. Now let's look at the shape and the polarity. So shape of NH3, shape in NH3. So there are number of electron groups, electron groups. So there are three single bonds, means three electron groups and on the central atoms, on nitrogen, okay? And there, are, there is one lone pair. Lone pair are the non-bonded electrons, the ones that are on the top, these guys. The lone pair is the, the yellow one, okay? And the three bonded atoms are these, one, two, three. These are the three bonded atoms. And the one, two, and three. So these are the single bonds, the three single bonds, three electron groups. One lone pair is equal to one electron groups. So to total, there are four electron groups. Okay, so look at the table. Table 6.16. .6. And we see that in that table, um, four electron groups correspond to what? So there are four examples here. So we will have to look further. Tetrahedral, yes, that tetrahedral is the electron group geometry. So just put tetrahedral if the question is asking for electron group geometry. But if the question is asking for molecular geometry, then you're going to look at how many lone pairs there are and how many bonded atoms there are. So, none, so this is the one, three. There are three bonded atoms and one lone pair. So you see that here, bonded atoms, three, lone pair is one. So that corresponds to at the distance, the at the angle in these atoms and the lone pairs, there they need to be very far away from as far away as is possible, and that is the trigonal pyramidal. And trigonal pyramidal looks like this. Okay, so let's look at this thing. So table. So this is the electron. So here we see. Two, three bonded atoms, three bonded atoms, and those are three hydrogens and one lone pair. And that one lone pair and three bonded hydrogens are that relates to a trigonal, trigonal pyramidal. Now that angle, if angle is very important because here's the thing. These lone pairs that are on the top, the lone pairs, the nitrogen, these lone pairs, and then these hydrogens here, lone pairs are, remember, these are electron, like, like negatively charged, you know, electron clouds. So this is a kind of a electron cloud that is negatively charged. Okay, negatively charged. Okay, and then we have these hydrogens, hydrogen and hydrogen, okay, bonded. These are three bonded atoms. So these guys do not like these bonded atoms. The, the lone pairs, lone pairs do not like, do not like bonded atoms, okay? So they push them, you know? So this is the valence shell electron pair repulsion. So they push the electrons 
and sorry, the, the, the electrons, sorry, the electrons and even the bonded atoms, the lo lone pair of the electrons, lone pair of electrons push the bonded atoms. And that is the hydrogens in this case. And they push them so far away that the angle comes out. The angle, angle is equal to 109 degrees. So that's like keeps them still connected with nitrogen, but at the cent and this is, that's the optimal distance from each other. That angle creates that optimal distance. So they don't repel, but at the same time remain connected with the central atom. Okay, that optimal distance that is maintained. Okay, so that's the valence shell electron pair repulsion. Um, so that's the shape. And here's the thing, when we talk about the pyramidal, so here is this nitrogen in the middle, and here you have these hydrogens. Lone pairs go on the top. Hydrogens are like the base of the pyramid. So here's the, the, the base of the pyramid looks like this. So this is the base of the pyramid, like that, like pyramid base, right? And this is the top, the top, like that. So in other words, the nitrogen is hidden inside, but from the outside, from the top of the pyramid, like that, like these guys, like this. And then this is at the back. So like, you know, so these lone pairs are either on the top or like, you know, so, so this looks like a, looks like a pyramid. All right. Next is the shape. Shape. Now, uh, sorry, we talked about the shape. The next is the polarity. Okay. One rule of the thumb. Polarity is one rule of the thumb is, and that rule is polarity. The rule is anytime you have a charge in a molecule or you have a lone pair on the central atom, lone pair on the central atom, okay? The molecule overall, even the overall molecule is always going to be polar, always. It's always a polar molecule. So comes the question. What about NH3? Is it polar or non-polar? Yes, it is very much polar because unequal distribution of electron clouds. Here you have these guys just sitting on top and these ones are like stuck in the bonds. So this is because of this inequality, this is the unequal distribution of electrons. So just the presence of these lone pairs makes that, okay? So unequal distribution of electron clouds, okay? Unequal distribution of electron clouds makes this molecule polar. Okay, the polar molecule. Okay, so this is the second example. Now let's look at the third example. Third example is, for example, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, so here we have two hydrogens, each bringing one electron, one oxygen, bringing in six electrons. So 
two electrons coming from hydrogen and six electrons coming from oxygen gives you eight electrons. So that's the total valence electrons. Next is the bond formation. Hydrogen will only make one bond, but oxygen makes two bonds. So who's going to be in the center? Oxygen, although has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. Always remember, you know, even if you don't know the numbers, at least by this time, you should know that the electronegativity, it's all, you know, here. Um, the trends in the periodic table and the ionization energy relates to electronegativity and electron affinity. So as you go from left to right in a periodic table, the electron affinity or the, the, the um, electron affinity or um, the electronegativity increases. So this is one piece. So you can also see it, you know, this is something like I said, you should just remember which elements are placed where. So this is the same thing. The electronegativity increases as you move from left to right. And electronegativity decreases as you go top down in the group. All right, so now we have, now we have um, uh, uh, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, but oxygen makes more bonds. Therefore, oxygen goes in the center. So central, central atom is equal to oxygen. So we have here hydrogen outside, oxygen in the middle, and hydrogen. Okay. Next is you attach them or put the single bond. Okay. Now, when you do that, you have one, two, three, four. Four electrons have been used up. You had eight electrons minus four electrons and you get four electrons. All right. Now, when you have four electrons left, since because hydrogen only makes one bond, so hydrogen's, you know, that need is met. And second thing is hydrogen does not follow octet. So uh, octet, sorry, octet. So the remaining four electrons go on, go on oxygen, okay? So these remaining four electrons, they go on oxygen. One, two, three, and four. And at an angle. Why? So keep this in mind that once again, Vesper theory, valence, shell, uh, electron, pair, repulsion theory states that the lone pair of electrons on oxygen, lone pair, of electrons on oxygen, push the bonded, push the bonded hydrogen atoms that are, that are singly bonded to oxygens. So in other words, by single bond, singly bonded to oxygen. So they, they get pushed. And at what angle this happens? Now let's look at this. This happens when you look into the, oh, sorry. Right here. So we are looking at uh, H2O right here, H2O. So at 109, okay, 109. So what kind should be the shape? And this is the tetrahedral is the electron group geometry. So when it pushes it, so this always happens at an angle. So um, lone pair of electrons on the oxygen push the bonded hydrogen atoms that are singly bonded to oxygen 
at an angle of 109 degrees in case of water. Okay? Okay, so they push it. So this whole angle and that between the lone pairs and all is 109 degrees. So that's the optimal distance from each other. Optimal distance. Optimal distance means when they are um, like far away, like farther apart from each other. Farther apart from each other yet still connected okay the connection is still there yet still connected to the central atom okay so now for oxygen let's draw this let's look at this again oxygen hydrogens this is one hydrogen. This is another hydrogen. These are the lone pairs. So how many electron groups are there? Electron groups are, there are two bonded atoms or two single bonds, two bonded atoms and two lone pairs. Two bonded atoms and two lone pairs. So this is one lone pair. This is the second lone pair. And the bonded atoms are, this is one bonded atoms. This is one. So, so one elect so single bond is like that electron cloud. So there are four electron groups. Four electron groups. And the electron group, electron group geometry is electron group geometry is tetrahedral. Like a We'll look into tetrahedral a little bit more, but that the electron group geometry is tetrahedral, but molecular geometry is molecular geometry. The shape is bent. So just pay attention to these two things. If it's electron group geometry, then you're going to look at that particular number. But if it's a molecular geometry, then, you know, look at the, so it's outside and inside, okay? So that's one piece. Next is the, so Vesper optimal distance. So we are looking at the, uh, shape. This piece was the shape. Next is polarity. Okay, remember, any time there is a lone pair on the central atom, any time lone pairs, lone pairs on central atom, the molecule is always going to be polar. So for high, so oxygen, lone pairs, two lone pairs, bent molecule, hydrogen and hydrogen. So oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. And the ox that's value is again 3.3.5 and hydrogen is hydrogen is 2.1. So 3.5 minus 2.1 that's the polar covalent. 3.5 3.5 minus 2.1. So this is the um, hydrogen electronegativity. So five minus one is four and three minus two is one. So it's 1.4. And so when you look at it here, 1.4, 1.4 polar covalent. So what does it look like? It looks like this. Oxygen, slightly delta negative, hydrogen delta positive, hydrogen delta positive. So the heat map looks like this. Hyd oxygen in the middle, hydrogen here, and hydrogen here. So this side is a very cold site. This side is 
very cold, very cold. Hydrogen side is very cold, but the oxygen side is extremely, uh, extremely hot. So this side, all this region is very, very hot. Okay, so as a result, we will have electrons spending more time towards oxygen, delta negative, hydrogen, delta positive, hydrogen, delta positive. So where is the overall polarity? Just for the sake of symmetry, it's towards oxygen. So this is a very polar molecule. Okay. Okay, so that was a third example. Let's look at the fourth example. So there is one carbon and there are four chlorines. One carbon and four chlorines, okay? So total valence electrons, one carbon bringing four, four chlorines each bringing seven, so this comes out to be four plus seven fours are 28. So this is 32 valence electrons. So total valence electrons is equal to 32. Now, which one gets to be in the center? Carbon or chlorine? So the electronegativity of chlorine is more than the electronegativity of carbon. How do you know? You can check the, first of all, the placement, but Chlorine is 3.0 and carbon is 2.5. So this is 2.5 and that's 3.0. So this is the, this is carbon and chlorine, right? So that's one piece. Carbon makes four bonds. And because chlorine is electronegative, but chlorine is, atta is attached to carbon, which is less electronegative. So chlorine will only make one bond because chlorine is bonded to carbon, okay, which has a lower electronegativity. If chlorine was bonded to oxygen, then it would have made like three, five, and seven bonds. But chlorine is only making, is, is only bonded to carbon, which already has a less electronegativity. So chlorine will only make one bond. Next is which one should be the central atom? Carbon is making four bonds. So carbon gets to be in the center. So central atom is carbon and each of the chlorine is going to be on the side. So let's do that. So here is your carbon in the middle. And here is your one chlorine. This is another chlorine. This is another chlorine. And this is another chlorine. So put it on all the four sides and join them with a single bond. Two, three, and four. So how many, how many electrons got used up? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight electron got used. Okay, out of the total 32. So 32 minus 8 is 24 electrons left. So those 24 electrons that were left are going to first fill the octet of the outer atoms. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So all the outer electrons, uh, all the outer atoms have used the remaining 24 electrons. Now we are going to check, check for number one, the octet of each atom, octet of each atom. So octet of each atom, car, car, uh, chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this way, all the chlorines have their octet met. So all four chlorines have met their octet. Check. Next is carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven and eight. So carbon also, carbon also has its octet met. So we are good with that. Next is need to make the bond. Is it satisfied or not? So next is the need to make the bond. Sorry. Need to make the bonds. Carbon wants to make four bonds. Chlorine wants to make one bond. So that is also being satisfied if you look at it. Okay. So this way we see that this molecule, which is carbon tetrachloride. Okay. We see that the octet is met and the bonds, the need to make the bonds are also met. Now let's look at the shape. So for the shape, we have carbon in the middle and we have these chlorines on the side. All right, now what is the shape? So clearly on the central atom, we see when chlorines are attached. So we don't care about the lone pair that is present on the chlorine. We are just going to keep that. And we see that one, two, three and four. There are four electron groups or four electron clouds. So four electron groups, zero lone pair, zero lone pair, four electron groups, and what else? Four bonded atoms. And that relates to, so come back here. So four electron groups are here. And now we are going to look at the four bonded atoms. Zero lone pair relates to 109 degrees Celsius and the shape is tetrahedral. And tetrahedral is like a chair. So this is how it looks like. So the black, ball is that of carbon, okay? And we have now the, this relates to tetrahedral. Molecular geometry or molecular shape. So what does it look like? Like a chair that is three-legged, like with three legs three-legged chair. So we have here carbon in the middle, up and the three on the side, like that. So this, the, there's one in the front, facing front, which you're going to put dark. Then the one that is on the side, it doesn't matter which one, but you know, the one that is on the side is this. So there is this chlorine on top, this, this, so the, the one with the three legs, so it's a three leg chair. This is the, you know, the back and the three are the legs, okay? So this is facing, facing you from the front. This is at the back, at the back of the chair. All right, so that is the, shape called a tetrahedral shape. All right, now comes the polarity. Okay, for the polarity, what do we see? Polarity is whether the molecule is polar or non-polar. So here you have these three dimension. In three dimension, it looks like, you know, like this, but now you see that carbon, the electronegativity is 2.5 chlorines, 
electronegativity 3.0. So the difference in electronegativity is 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5. And that, that relates to polar. You can see for yourself the difference in electronegativity. Oh, 0.4 to 1.86, so it's 0.5. So that is polar covalent, shared unequally, and there are charges. So every, sorry. So here is your chlorine, delta negative charge, carbon delta positive charge, because it's a very, it's, it's a polar bond, polar bond between carbon and chlorine. Okay, so this guy is a polar bond. It will pull the electron clouds towards itself. This guy is a, has a polar bond, pulls the electron clouds towards itself. This one has a polar bond, pulls the electron clouds towards itself. So on all the four directions, there is equal, equal pull of electrons on all the four directions, equal pull of the electrons. Then what happens when there is an equal pull of the electrons? They, there is the effect cancels out. The effect cancels out. Okay, so no matter, you know, so this is how this would look like. This is a molecule eventually will look like this. So here's this carbon, here's this chlorine, 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 and chlorine. And Fine, we will see these are the bonds. This is bonded. And we are going to see the electrons spending more time towards chlorine. This guy, electrons spending more times here. Electrons spending more time. Electrons spending more time. Okay, and as a result, carbon, less time towards carbon. So, fine, we will see delta. This is delta negative because of that delta let's do this this is delta negative delta negative delta negative delta negative that's delta positive okay so carbon will be cold region so carbon is very cold but chlorines are very hot okay so even though you have that cold and hot, you know, but it's an equal, you know, the spread out is equal. So that is why the overall molecule becomes nonpolar. E even though the, the bond, the individual bond between carbon and um, carbon and chlorine is, is polar, okay? Okay, although the individual bonds are polar, but they, they cancel out. So it becomes a, still it is a non-polar molecule. All right, guys, so I can go on and on doing these examples and it's just take me all night. But the last one I want to do is the uh, resonance. A resonance. And that's, we'll, we will stop. The resonance, the resonance means D localization of double of uh, delocalization of electrons and double bond. So in other words, the double bonds rotate internally. Okay, so how? Look at this. So you have, let's look at carbonate, CO3, two negative. So we have here one carbon and we have three oxygens. And two negative charge means two electrons. Two electrons. That, okay. So each carbon has four electrons. Each oxygen has six electrons. 
and and then there are two electrons you have to add them separately so you have four plus six threes are 18 plus two more so this becomes 24 electrons total we need to place one piece next is should carbon be in the center oxygen be in the center obviously the electronegativity of carbon is less than the electronegativity of oxygen. Carbon makes four bonds. Oxygen makes six bonds. Sorry, oxygen makes two bonds. Okay, so because of that, by virtue of that, carbon gets to be in the middle. Carbon comes in the middle and you have oxygens, the three oxygens on three sides. All right, and now connect them. Single bond, single bond, single bond. How much did we use? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons got used. So 24 minus six is um, 18. 18 electrons left. So what are you going to do? You're going to add them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So all the 18 electron got used up. Now, what are you going to do? Check. Check for the need to make the bonds. Is it met or not? No, carbon wants to make four bonds, but carbon is only making three. Oxygen wants to make two bonds, but oxygen is also not making those two bonds. Carbon is making, wants to make four bonds, is not making. So, so none of their needs are being satisfied. So what is going to happen? We, they are going to do a rearrangement. And how are they going to make the rearrangement? They are going to just do it again. Oxygen, carbon, oxygen, and oxygen. All right. Now we see here one thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13, 16, 17, 18. All right. Now, when one of the oxygens, this is going to give its lone pair and it comes between carbon and oxygen. So then what happens? This becomes, this looks like this, double bond. And these lone pairs, they spread out. You know, see, initially they were at 90 degrees. Now they are spread out. It's even a happier condition. And these two are waiting for their turns to share. They can only share one at a time. But if you look at it, carbon is making in this arrangement, in this rearrangement, carbon is making four bonds. So this is one bond and this is one bond. Okay, so that's how it becomes a double bond. So carbon is making four bonds, but oxygen is not making four bonds, not all of the oxygens, sorry, uh, uh, two bonds. Okay, so obviously, the, this oxygen is unhappy. The ones that's not making two bonds. And so where is this charge? Right here. Okay. So oxygens that are oxygens that are not bonded. Will carry a minus charge. Okay, oxygens that, 
sorry, not bonded, like not double bonded. Okay, so this charge we see here, that one. But what is resonance? Now look at resonance. When one of the oxygens sees the other resonance, one of the oxygens sees the other oxygen making a double bond. Then, and carbon can only make a maximum of four bonds. Okay, so therefore, one of the oxygens is going to say, okay, we will have to take turns in who gets to carry the negative charge and who gets to um, make the bonds with carbon. So this is what the resonance looks like. Oxygen and oxygen. And so right here are the lone pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is negative, this is negative. Okay, next is what is happening here. Next is this guy goes here, this one gets moved back to its original place. So now we see this carbon is making a single bond, but this one is making a double bond and this one is waiting its turn. So now this guy already had a negative charge to begin with. This one now acquires a negative charge and these electrons, this one is like this. Okay, next is um, this one goes and makes the bond, this bond pushes to the side. So now we have C, sorry, <laughs> C, oxygen, double bond, single bond. So now we have these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and negative charge. Negative charge here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This one is double, negative. Oh, sorry, not the double negative, but you say. So you see, this is what's happening. Next is, so this, this way, they, this keeps on rotating. So then this, uh, this guy comes here and this one goes back. So now we see, we see now this carbon, double bond, this oxygen, this single bond, this single bond. So back to, you know, square one. So just do this. So one, two, one, sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now, and this is negative charge and this is negative charge. And so this back comes back to this one. These two look the same. So these are all called resonating structures. Okay, so that is the end of this for now. <clears throat> okay, so the rest is there's a worksheet and you guys need to practice it. And I'm hoping that this was, I was a little bit getting sleepy. So I may be saying a few things here and there, but I think pretty much I covered everything. But, um, you know, if you don't understand anything, you can always ask guys, don't hesitate. I'm here to help you. And I want you to do well and learn. I know it is hard, but uh, it, it's manageable, okay? So just make sure that you practice, do the worksheet, practice. And in case you are stuck somewhere, don't hesitate to ask me, all right? Okay, 3.39 a.m. <laughs> okay, good night, bye. <laughs>